Friends, it is Saturday, February 27, and um, we are going to take a look at uh, a passage from Matthew 25, as well as uh, repeat yesterday's passage, which was Luke 23, 43, this extraordinary claim to authority when Jesus says to the penitent thief on the cross, truly I tell you, today you'll be with me in paradise. You remember that? But it's actually not the first time that Jesus claimed this end of history authority, this capacity to bring all of human life, the great human story, to a conclusion and then to judge all the participants. In Matthew 25 verses 31 to 34, he says this, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all his angels with him, he will sit on the throne of his glory and all the nations will be gathered before him. And he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. And then he will say to those on his right hand, that is to the sheep, come, you are blessed by, the, by my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, you know, Jesus had this moment with the criminal, the penitent or, or um, confessing criminal who, who was so remarkable uh, to me. And I, I'm sure that Jesus' eyes must have opened wide to hear this man say that not only was he guilty and deserved his punishment, but that Jesus was innocent. And then to say, remember me in your, in your kingdom. It's such an incredible thing. Uh, and, uh, you know, Jesus could have replied in a variety of ways. He could have said, thanks for your support. You know, you're the only one who's supporting me in this terrible moment. There's often in the background, there's a few faithful women and perhaps uh, one of his disciples, John, but they're not, they're not saying anything at this moment. Um, they, they're, they're maybe giving the gift to their presence, but the only one who's verbally supporting him in the torrent of abuse he's getting from the crowd, from the leaders and uh, from this criminal is the other criminal. And he could have said, hey, thank you for your support. Or he could have said, you know, I, I'm going to put in a good word with the Father for you. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to mention your, your, the fact that you were kind to me in this terrible moment to my Father. Instead, he says, today you're going to be with me in paradise. Bang. End of story. I am the final figure in history. I am the one who judges the living and the dead and brings history to its conclusion. And in your case, I'm doing it right now. Bang. You're going to be with me in paradise. This uh, concept of authority is a very hard one for people in the modern and postmodern worlds to hear. The story of, uh, of, of Western civilization is really a story of a, a crisis in authority. Uh, one great uh, ethicist at Princeton University who, who is a brilliant secular thinker called Jeffrey Stout wrote a wonderful book called The Flight from Authority. And it's gradually the way in which people have lost confidence in traditional authorities, uh, family authorities, institutional authorities, biblical and religious authorities. And so uh, there's a suspicion. And, you know, one of the things in the narrative that we've been reading this week, one of the pieces that's there is that human authorities are put in their place by the events on the cross because they all get it wrong. The Jewish authorities get Jesus wrong. Uh, the Roman authorities get it wrong. And you see that the callousness of the Roman authorities, their indifference to what's really true in the situation. They know that he's innocent. They still condemn him because it's just a bureaucratic thing to get out of the way, get the crowd quiet, let's move on. It's not going to matter. Now, that's Pilate's attitude. We see the, the, the um, self-righteousness and the misguidedness. Jesus says, you know, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. The misguidedness of the Jewish leaders who think they're defending God's honor when they're upsetting God's, per you know, when they're, when they're undermining God's Messiah, attacking God's Messiah. And um, so there's all of these moments are moments where a the human authority is exposed as always being impartial and imperfect. 
And that's one of the primary um, lessons that we have uh, from these chapters is the, is the incompleteness of all forms of uh, human authority. That message is a hard one for modern people to hear in one sense. I think today there's a lot of suspicion about authorities as well. And I guess I would say the Bible in general teaches us not just to respect authorities as a gift from God, but to be suspicious of them. Authorities can be racist. They can, be, they can, they can benefit one group or one class over another. They, they can be oligarchies. They can be, they can be selfish. They can be abusive. They can be totalitarian. There's lots of reasons why uh, we, we, we can and should be suspicious of authorities. But what I want to warn us about today is that I would say that the other problem that the modern world has is not just the flight from traditional authorities, but it's a flight toward making each of us as an individual the ultimate authority. It's the flight that ends up where I become the only judge in my own case, the only person I need to please, the only arbiter, the only creator of my own moral system and my own identity. And that move, which is also very typical of our age, is, is a terrible mistake because, in fact, there is a judge. And it's not you. And it's not me. Our authority is not ultimate. In fact, we are the last people who should ever be in a position to be judges over our own conduct and over our own hearts. Because, frankly, we're too narcissistic to, to see the wood for the trees. I meet people all the time as a pastor that that maybe they're too condemning about themselves. They can't even see their own gifts. They're too full of guilt and shame to be able to use the, the gifts that they have in their life. Or they can't see their own flaws and problems. And most of us, there's a little bit of both. We're not good judges in our own cause. Uh, but there is one who will be our judge. One authority that is a complete and permanent authority and a, an authority which will bring history to a conclusion and will make final judgments. Let's now pray. Heavenly Father, we want to remember in a world that that either rushes from judgment or rushes to judgment, that wants to make each of us arbiters in our own causes, that too easily divides up the sheep and the goats, the perpetrators and the victims on the basis of an ideology or an analysis, be it racial or economic, we live in that world, and yet the Bible claims there is only one innocent and perfect judge who by rights, because of character and because of nature, is in a position to judge, and that's Jesus. Help us to take account of the unique authority that he should have in our lives and in our world as we think about how to live, how to represent him and how to respond. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.